Let's look at a quick example of a common source circuit with a diode load. All right, so here we have our NMOS transistor that's connected to the supply rail. And remember that we're in a bulk CMOS process, so our NMOS transistor has the bulk tied to ground. We tie the gate to the same supply node that the drain is tied to. And we have an NMOS transistor working as a transconductor. The input's on the gate. And the output is on the drain. So looking at this, we can say obviously that our voltage gain is equal to minus GM, minus big GM times RA, where RA is the total resistance seen at the node labeled A uh, that I just drew. Now remember that the transconductor transistor has an output resistance RO that's acting as a current source. And we know that G, big GM is equal to GM1. We'll call this transistor M1 and this transistor M2. So big GM is equal to the transconductance of transistor M1. And RA, the total resistance seen at that node, is equal to 1 divided by GM2 plus GMB2 in parallel with the output resistance of transistor 1. Now, we can say that 1 divided by GM is going to be a much smaller impedance than the output resistance of transistor 1, so we can say that RA is approximately equal to 1 divided by GM1 or GM2 plus GMB2. I'm going to introduce a variable here called eta, which is equal to GMB divided by GM. So it's the ratio of the front gate transconductance to the back gate transconductance, or vice versa, actually, the back gate transconductance to the front gate transconductance. Uh, and we will typically use a value of approximately 0.1 for this number. So after making that substitution, we can say that our voltage gain is equal to minus GM1 divided by GM2 plus GMB2, or plugging eta in, we can say it's equal to minus 1 divided by eta plus 1 times GM1 over GM2. Now, we can substitute in our, uh, one of the expressions that we use for GM1, and we're going to uh, do the expression that's in terms of the current and the width of the device. So we can say that AV is equal to minus 1 over eta plus 1 times the square root of 2 mu n C ox times W over L1 times the drain current. And the same current will be flowing through both devices, so it'll be the same drain current. Divided by the square root of 2 mu n C ox times W over L2 times ID. So we can cancel out most of the terms in this expression because the transistors are both in uh, MOS transistors. They both have the same current flowing through them. So we can say that this is equal to minus 1 divided by eta plus 1 times the square root of the ratio of the width over length of the devices, w, L, w over L1 divided by W over L2. All right, so if we want to have a large gain from this type of transistor, then we would want W over L1 to be much, much larger than W over L2. Now there are practical limits to this. We can't just arbitrarily make W over L1 much, much larger than W over L2 uh, in, in a, for a, a practical layout in an integrated circuit. 
And so the best case that we can do is maybe get a gain of, you know, two, three, four, five, something kind of small. And so this motivates the fact that we need to use a different type of load. We can't use a diode as a load uh, for an amplifier and get a lot of gain. Now this doesn't mean that we would never use a diode as a load. In fact, sometimes we want something like a buffer and a diode load is a, a perfectly acceptable solution. But if we want large gain, we need something other than a diode load.